we now start the discussion on the module 2 of chapter 7. In this module, we are going to present a very important theorem of real analysis, which is named after Italian mathematician Giuseppe Vitali and this is called Vitali covering theorem. It is a type of covering theorem. You have already come across such theorems, for example, high neighborhood theorem, where you have dealt with open covers. So, this is also a type of covering theorem with respect to measure. And the nicety of this theorem is that it has found many important applications in real analysis and measure theory. We start with this important definition of the Vitali cover. You all know that a collection of sets is said to cover a set A if every point of A belongs to some member of that collection. You are already familiar with open covering and you know about compactness that a set in the real line is compact if and only if every open cover has a finite sub cover. So, here also we are looking at certain types of cover but here we are looking at the cover from the point of view of measure theory. So, the formal definition is like this. Let A subset of R, let V be a family of closed intervals, where none of the intervals consist of a single point. That is, we are only considering non-degenerate closed intervals, that is closed intervals which have positive length. Then the family V is said to cover the set A in the sense of Vitali, if for every point x belonging to A and every epsilon greater than 0, we can find a closed interval i from the collection V such that x belongs to i and measure of i that is length of i is less than epsilon. If you consider all closed intervals with say rational endpoints, then see that these closed intervals form a cover of any set A in the sense of Vitali. Now, we give the statement of the important theorem, Vitali covering theorem. Let a set A be bounded and be covered by a family V of closed intervals in the sense of Vitali. Then it is possible to select a finite or a denumerable family of closed intervals i k from the collection V such that The members of this collection are pairwise disjoint, that is i i intersection i j is equal to phi when i is not equal to j and the union of these intervals covers the set A in the sense of measure, that is mu star of A minus union k i k is equal to 0. So, this particular 
denumerable family of closed intervals has the property that they are pairwise disjoint and the points which do not belong to any of them that whole set has outer measure 0. The proof is very long and quite complicated and so we start our journey. Since the set A is bounded, so we can choose a bounded open set delta such that A subset of delta and mu of delta is less than mu star A plus epsilon. This follows from the definition of the Lebesgue outer measure. Now, what we do is that we remove from the whole collection V the larger members that is all those intervals which are not contained entirely within delta. Observe that since delta is an open set and A is subset of delta. So, every point x belonging to A also belongs to delta and consequently there is an open interval say x minus epsilon to x plus epsilon which is already contained in delta. And since the members of V have as small length as we like. So, there are many many members of V still which are contained in that interval x minus delta to x plus delta and so they are entirely contained within the open set delta. So, the remaining collection of closed intervals which we denote by V 0 clearly covers the set A again in the sense of Vitali, because we have only deleted the larger intervals. Choose a particular closed interval say I 1 from this collection. If A is subset of I 1, then the proof is finished. Otherwise, we select the intervals successively in this way. Suppose that the intervals i 1, i 2, i n have been selected and they are mutually disjoint. Again, if A is subset of union k is equal to 1 to n i k, then the proof is finished. If not, then we have A minus union k equal to 1 to n i k, this is not equal to phi. So, there are points still in the set A, which is not covered by this finite number of closed intervals i 1, i 2, i n. Let us write f n as the union k equal to 1 to n i k and g n as delta minus f n. Observe that f n being finite union of closed intervals is a closed set. Since delta is open, so g n being the difference of an open set and a closed set is open. Let L n be the supremum of the lengths of all the intervals which are entirely contained in 
dn. Now, since all such intervals are contained in the bounded open set delta, so this number ln must be finite. Now, from the definition of supremum, choose an interval i n plus 1 from this particular collection for which mu of i n plus 1 is greater than l n by 2. So, the trick is that we have to consider pairwise disjoint intervals, but at the same time we do not want to choose intervals with very, very small length, so that it cannot cover the set A in the sense of measure. So, we have to choose intervals in such a way, so that they remain pairwise disjoint from the earlier intervals, but they still are not that much small. So, this is the amount of measure which we use. Clearly, this interval i n plus 1 is disjoint from the intervals i 1, i 2, i n. Again, if the process stops at finite number of steps, then we get that A is subset of union of all those i n's and the proof is finished. Otherwise, the process goes on infinitely and we get a pairwise disjoint sequence of closed intervals i 1, i 2, i n etcetera. Let us write S as the union of all these intervals that is union k equal to 1 to infinity i k. So, we want to show that mu star a minus s equal to 0. Now, we start the proof by constructing closed intervals v k, which are concentric with the closed intervals i k, but with 5 times length than the lengths of i k. That is mu of v k is equal to 5 into mu of i k. Now, observe that this sequence of closed intervals i 1, i 2, i 3, i n, this is contained in the bounded open set delta. And so, mu of union k is equal to 1 to infinity i k this is less or equal to mu of delta, which is a finite number. But on the left hand side, using the additivity of Lebesgue measure or more precisely countable additivity of Lebesgue measure, we have sigma k is equal to 1 to infinity mu of i k this is less or equal to mu of delta, which is finite. And this shows that the infinite series of positive terms on the left hand side is a convergent infinite series. If we now consider the infinite series sigma k equal to 1 to infinity mu v k, then see that this is equal to sigma k equal to 1 to infinity 5 into mu i k. So, this is 5 times sigma k equal to 1 to infinity mu i k, which is already a finite number. So, the right hand side is again a finite real number. This shows that sigma k equal to 1 to infinity mu v k 
is also a convergent series of positive real numbers. Now, using the Cauchy criteria of infinite series, we have sigma k equal to i to infinity mu v k, this tends to 0 as i tends to infinity. So, we have sigma k equal to i to infinity mu v k tends to 0 as i tends to infinity and this is the most important statement because we shall now show that a minus s is subset of union k equal to i to infinity v k. And if we can show that, then see that mu star of a minus s will be less or equal to sigma k equal to i to infinity mu v k, which in any case tends to 0 and consequently we will have mu star of a minus s equal to 0. So, start with a fixed i and let us take an arbitrary point small x belonging to a minus s. Clearly, this point x belong to the set g i which is open. Since x belongs to a and g i is open, so we can find a closed interval j belonging to the collection v 0 such that x belongs to j subset of g i. See that we have already this closed interval j subset of g i. Now, if j is subset of g n for all n, then by the definition of l n, we have mu of j is less or equal to l n, because what is l n? l n is the supremum of the lengths of all the intervals which are contained in g n. But l n is less or equal to 2 mu i n plus 1. Recall that i n plus 1 was such an interval that mu i n plus 1 is greater than or equal to l n by 2. Now, since sigma k is equal to 1 to infinity l i k is a convergent series of positive numbers and we know that the general term of a convergent series tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. So, mu i n plus 1 tends to 0 and this implies that we must have mu of j equal to 0, but this is impossible because j has strictly positive length. So, j cannot be subset of g n for all n. In other words, there must exist some positive integer n for which the above does not hold. Clearly, for such a positive integer n, j intersection f n is non empty, because j is not a subset of g n and g n and f n are the complement of each other. Let m be the smallest positive integer for which this relation holds. Now, j subset of g i implies that j intersection f i is equal to phi. Since f 1 subset of f 2 subset of f 3, it is an increasing sequence, 
therefore, we must have this positive integer m greater than i. Again from the choice of m c that j is subset of g m minus 1 and consequently j intersection f m minus 1 should be equal to phi. But j intersection f m is not equal to phi. What is the difference between f m minus 1 and f m? f m minus 1 is the union of the closed intervals i 1 to i m minus 1 and f m is the union of the closed intervals i 1 to i m. So, this shows that we must have j intersection i m not equal to phi. We already have j subset of g m minus 1 and therefore, it follows again from the definition of l m minus 1 that mu of j is less or equal to l m minus 1 this is again less or equal to 2 mu i m. Now, consider this interval j. So, this particular interval j has intersection with the interval i m and its length is less or equal to twice the length of the interval i m. Since the intervals v k have been constructed in such a way that v k are concentric with i k and the lengths of v k are 5 times the length of i k. So, we get that j must be subset of v m and since m is greater than i. So, we finally, have j subset of union k equal to i to infinity v k, which again implies that x belongs to union k equal to i to infinity v k. And since this is true for any i, so this completes our proof. So, to summarize what we did in this module is that we have proved a very important theorem of real analysis, which is named after Italian mathematician Giuseppe Vitali and this is called Vitali covering theorem. The theorem states that if A is a bounded set of real numbers and if V is a collection of closed intervals covering the set A in the sense of Vitali, then I can find a finite or a denumerable collection of pairwise disjoint closed intervals i n such that mu star of A minus union n i n is equal to 0. Now, one of the most useful consequences of this result is that given any arbitrary epsilon greater than 0 as small as we like, we can actually choose finite number of intervals i 1, i 2, i n from this collection such that mu star of a minus union i equal to 1 to n i i this is less than epsilon and we will see that we can use this observation to prove many many more important results in measure theory and in Lebesgue integration. And with this, we end this module.